Uh, this morning I'm reading from Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 22. I'll be reading from Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 through 22. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it is pleased. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I read from Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 22. May we receive a blessing and guidance as we read and study God's holy word. We'll now have prayer as we can Donnell Keys. Thanking you for the many blessings you stored upon me. Thanking you for last night rest. Thanking you for touching this morning for a brand new day we never seen before. Thanking you for your mercy and your grace. Thanking you, God, for you are God. Thanking you for your son Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins, that we might have the life, the right to the tree of life. Thank you for our pastor, wherever he may be. Keep him guided and bring him safely back home. Thank you for the minister of the hour. Thank you for the deacon, the mother, ushers, saints, and friends. It's a beautiful day that you created special for us. Oh Lord, have mercy. Thank you, God, for allowing us up and down the dangerous highway, keeping us from all harm and danger. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that keeps us in God of each and every day of our life. Yeah. Keep us in your care, your loving arms, and protect us all around us. We ask this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
ushering for years. <laughs> years. Mm -hmm. I've been at Union Baptist mm -hmm. Church of Christ. Thank you. Um, before we get started, I'm going to have the welcome of our brother James Lee. All right. <laughs> Give honor to God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost to our pastor, Elder Brother Boston, Minister, Deacon, Mother, Usher, and friends. Every believer has called, has a calling into the ministry of the body of Christ. Any acts of Christian service which help direct men and women into the fellowship with Jesus Christ is a ministry. Ushering is a lot, more than showing someone their seat, ushering in the ministry. Here are four reasons why the ministry of usher needs to have an important place in the church. Number one, the usher is often the first official representative of Jesus Christ seen by people entering the building or the auditorium. Preachers, musicians, ministers to people in groups, but ushers minister to people as individuals. Because we see y'all at that door first, so that's the first thing y'all see is a big old smile from us. And most all of my ushers right there, when they're not masked up, y'all see that big old smile. <laughs> the usher is the only person whose function cannot be replaced or omit. At all times, the usher must be on duty to maintain an order of the church, which means the usher needs to know everything that goes on in this church. We're supposed to be here 15 minutes before, so we can set up, knowing everything, so we know when we need to usher in the choir. We need to know when we need when where people are sitting, so we know in case we need to get them, we know where to go. We need to know our here. Usher is the forerunner. It is his or her attitude that will always play a big part in preparing the hearts of the people for their whole experience in the house of the Lord. Because with us standing back there, y'all, we're the first one y'all see. So if we come in with an attitude, y'all gonna say, oh my, what in the world is in here? I don't know if I wanna come up in here or not. But you know, most, like I said, <laughs> my ushers are always smiling. They greet, greet you with a smile and a good morning. How you doing? Amen. Well, so Ushers here at Unitad has been done for over many years. Sister Lenore James Boston, Sister Thurma Moore decided they wanted to usher, have an usher anniversary. Doing that, Sister Moore, Sister Delma Brooks, uh, Moore Boston, Sister Senior Brooks James, Brother Daniel Wester James, Deacon Elijah Boston, Brother Thomas Boston began usher. Sister Thelma Moore resigned as president. The following members became began president. Sister Thelma Boston, Sister Eva Lee James, Sister Thelma Boston again, Sister uh, Thea Staten, Sister Evelyn Cameron, Sister Carolyn Biggs, Sister Ora Parker, Parker, and our current president, Betty Yule. As we look out over our lives truly, as a doorkeeper, we have the opportunity to witness to all the unsaved in order to win their Christ, over to Christ. We pray that we can be a blessing to all that enter the house of the Lord. Right now, we want to have a little prayer for our ushers that have gone on to glory. program 
Wake up, lift up, dress up, stand up, shut up, look up, and reach up. <laughs> the Lord is going to start us off. Decides to have a good day and to seek opportunities, seek opportunities to be blessing to someone else. Let us not be weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us be good. Galatians 6, 9, and 10. Thank you. change God's characters, but be careful not to damage his reputation. But put on a smile. It is a great way to improve your look, keep your desire in check, because the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. Be in his word, pray, and seek to please him, and he will put the proper desires in your heart. All right. <laughs> Stand up. be gracious and attractive. Colossians 4, 6. Gracious means give credit beyond what desire. Don't gossip. <laughs> Learn to listen. James 1, 19. <laughs> I'm going to laugh right. <laughs> who, 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 who talked the most? <laughs> this is what I told him I was going to do that because Mr. Cuffin used to talk about shh, shh. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Look up. Open your eyes to the Lord. He 
is your Savior. He has promised to return. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draws nigh. Luke 21, 28. Do you live with the expectancy of Christ's imminent return? Strengthen your heart, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. James 5, 8. Good morning. Good morning. Nietzsche, are you growing in the knowledge of God? Are you fully utilizing the natural talents and spiritual gifts he has given you? Reach up for something more noble. Paul said, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. If you are a Christian, so can you. Thank you. him and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Live your life so that when you meet your Savior face to face, he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter to the joy of your Lord. Matthew 25, 21 to 23. <laughs> the reason why we chose this program, the 7 Up program, because all of those <coughs> that I just heard, which was wake up, lift up, dress up, stand up, shut up, look up, reach up. Everything that you heard was a good usher. We yeah. all have to go through all of that every morning and every day to be a good usher. Because back there at that door, if we are not prayed up, <laughs> if we are not paying attention, a lot of things happen out there, so y'all don't see it. We get pushed back there, we get fussed at back there, and we have to continue to keep our smile on our face. So what I'm saying is, this is a good usher, and this is why we chose this program today, to show you what we do every day back there. And like I said, I appreciate all of my ushers. I, uh, I'm gonna introduce my ushers. Mary Smith, Anita Whitehurst, Dolores Pierce, Evelyn Cameron, and James Lee. Can y'all sing? Angela Boston, she's not here today, and I'm the president of the year. But what? And Helen Gibson. And I have a little gift for them. I'm going to pass them on out. But I have love for everybody, too. We have a, some. Seven ups back there for y'all. Simple. 
want to come into the sanctuary and see you.
you are there. As a matter of fact, we are better than blessed. Why? Because we serve a God who is in the blessing business. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. of the multitude. Mm -hmm. John 13 chapter 10 and 11 verse and it says mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him he that is washed need not say to wash his feet mm -hmm. but is clean every week mm -hmm. and ye are clean but not all. Mm -hmm. For he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, ye are not all clean. Amen. Are we still betraying Jesus? Let us pray. Most holy and righteous heavenly Father, as I come before you in this thou <coughs> today, I ask you to take away self, oh Father God, that none of this would be of me, but it would all be of you. Yes. Because it's not about me. Yes. And it's all about you. Yes. Hide me behind the cross, dear Father, that 
They can only see you and you crucified. Father God, because I could do nothing without you, but through you I can do all things in Christ. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Yeah. O oh Lord, thy strength and thy redeemer. Yeah. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Are we still betraying Christ? When we think about betraying somebody, we think about doing something that we shouldn't do. Okay. We are being unfaithful. We are being untrustworthy. Jesus. We are doing things that we shouldn't do. Because now, 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 how can I be unfaithful to you? Or how can I be untrustworthy by me standing back here behind this sacred pole I can be unfaithful to you by telling you the wrong things Amen. not telling you what does say the Lord I'm betraying you because why I'm not doing you justice because I'm leading you down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now we see that, and, and, and the, the, the sad part about this is that when somebody is betraying you, they're not your enemies. Most of the time, it's someone that you know. Jesus Christ's enemy didn't betray him. It was one of his inner circle. Yeah. All right. Which was Judas Issachar. And even to that point, Peter betrayed him also. Because why? He denied him right. when he told him that he would not do it. So are we denying Christ today? When we deny Christ, we are doing the opposite of what he wants us to do. If God has given you a gift and he has called you to a, a position in the church and you refuse to do it, you are denying Christ. And even when he calls, he touches your heart and, and he lets you know that you are outside of the ark of safety mm -hmm. and you refuse to adhere to his calling, mm -hmm. you are the betraying Christ. Right. We see Joseph. And we know the story of Joseph, that, that his father uh, 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 esteemed him more than his brothers. Why? Because then he made him a coat of many colors, and, and Joseph kind of boasted about that. And his brother became envious of him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we see that, that in the meantime, while they were doing this and that and the other, Joseph they was out and, and they saw how they were going to get back at Joseph. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we as a people, we do that same thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody do something to us, we want to say, how can I get back at them? Mm -hmm. See, but that's not Christ's life. So we see that they took Joseph and they threw him in a pit. Right. <laughs> what they meant for his bad turned out to be good. Right. The evil 
was sold him into slavery. All right. But see, that was all part of God's plan. Yes. How he was going to, what? Yes. Save his people. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. All right. So we know the story that, that, that a famine came in the land. There was seven years of good, good crops and seven years of bad crops. And those seven years that they stored up the, the crop so that what? When those seven years of famine came, they would have something that they could fall back on. And even while Joseph was second in command, a powerful wife tried to get him to, to, to betray. But he did not fall for it. And see, he was thrown back in the prison. Mm -hmm. but, but one thing about that, he could in what? Interpret dreams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so in, in the meantime, while he was interpreting those dreams, there was two in there that he told them what their dreams meant. <laughs> so when they, and then he told one of them, when you get out, now you let them know what's going on. All right. All right. I'm paraphrasing that. I'm not telling you exactly how it is, but you know the story. So then after that, he was brought out and put in second command. So that when this family came and his brothers came to, to, to inquire about getting food, they didn't even recognize who it was. But, but when they came, he knew who they were. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they betrayed him, God, God put it in his heart to what? To forgive. Yeah. And see, that's what Jesus did. Yeah. Even though sometimes we betray God, betray God, he still what sitting on the throne said, What? I still love you. Yeah. Yeah. And I will what? I will forgive you. All you have to do is just what? Ask for forgiveness. Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and see, we, we, we look at David, which we know David was a man after God's own heart. But what did he do? He messed up. And, and then uh, uh, his, his, uh, his, his chief officer who was Bathsheba's grandfather sought how he was going to get back at David. But as I told you, things that you meant for good, bad, God can turn around and mean for good. <coughs> we give our lives to Christ, <coughs> he takes things that, that Satan throws at us and turns it around for our good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Because why? He loves us that just that much. Amen. He don't want to see anything bad happen to us. Amen. Let me ask you this question. Do you want anything <coughs> bad to happen to your children? No. A child of God has things that even though it comes our way, we have someone there to protect us. But sometimes we walk, we fall by the wayside. You take the, the, uh, uh, the, the prodigal son. Had it made. But what did he do? He wanted to go out on his own. Thought he could do it by him, by himself. So give me what belongs to me, and, and, and I don't need to no more. Sometimes that's what we do for Jesus. We want to put him on the back burner. But God still swap. I love it.
So, so what I'm trying to get us to see is, is even though sometimes we may not do it, all the things that God wants us to do, he still loves us. Even though we sometimes, we, as, as we're talking about, we could betray him, but he still loves us. Yeah. And, and see, the thing about that is, God knows everything. He knows all things. See, I know Deacon Gay, but I don't know everything about Deacon Gay. I know my brothers and sisters, but I don't know everything about him. But see, there's nothing about us that God does not know. And what I'm trying to get us to see is that even though we may betray him, we can still come back to him. All right. See, that's what Peter did. Even though Peter denied him three times, he realized what? When he heard that cock crow, he realized what? He did just what God had told him that he was going to do. And what happened? He began to weep, to become sorrowful for what he had done. And what? He became one of the greatest preachers that was. Amen. Because why? On the day of Pentecost, look what happened. Amen. Three thousand souls to say. See, all we have to do is walk upright before God. Even though we may, sometimes, as I say, we may make a mistake. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is ask for forgiveness. Amen. Because we serve a just God. Yes. Because if He did not love us. He would not have sent his son yeah. to die on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. And if his son did not love us, yeah. he would not have died yeah. on the cross. Yeah. Because he would say, what? Well, there's no hope for him. Because he knew the only way that we could get back in the right fellowship with God Almighty was to invite. His blood. Right. Not the shedding of goats, turtle doves, and, and sheep and that. Because why? Every year they had to go back. Keep going back. Keep going back. See, because he became that ultimate sacrifice. The one that walked. All you have to do is walk. Come, God, God is sorrow for the sin that we have done. Repent, ask for forgiveness, Amen. and do as He has instructed us to do. Amen. And that was what to be baptized for the what the remission of sin, because we know that what without His shedding of His blood, there would be no remission of sin. Amen. And that's and he died on the cross so that we could get back in the right fellowship. And even though sometimes we may go astray, as I say, he's not going to say, I'm going to cast you away. I don't want to have nothing else to do with you. He's still right there saying, come home. Come on back. All you have to do is just ask for, the, for forgiveness. And I will forgive you. Yes. And see what, and the thing about that is too, he doesn't keep bringing it up. All right. All right. All right. He won't keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you remember when, when you did this and you did that? Great. He's not that kind of a God. He's a loving God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A kind God. A merciful God. Yeah. One that cares. Yeah. Amen. One that will will forgive. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
So, so in other words, John, you just see, we cannot continue on going down that path of unrighteousness. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because one day, that grace and mercy will be cut off. Will be cut off. So, while we are yet in our right mind, yes, Lord, we have our help and strength. Yes, yes. Where we can do the things that God has called us to do. Amen. All we have to do is accept it and go forward. Because why? He's not going to have you to do something that you cannot do. So, we have, as though I said, the, the prodigal son strayed away, yeah. betrayed his father. Yeah. But in the end, yeah. Thank you, Lord. before it was too late, yeah. he came back. Yeah. He came back. Thank you. So, if we are in that same situation, before it's too late, come on back. You don't have to continue to betray Jesus Christ. But it's up to us. Are we still betraying Christ? For that, for some of us, it's yes. All right. And for some of us, it's, the answer is no. Because why? We have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Because what? We know that if we keep going down that same path, what the end is going to be. And we know that there's destruction at the end of that pathway where the road is wide. What we want to do is get on that narrow road. Yes, 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 yes. That narrow road. Yes. Where it leads from earth to glory. Yes, 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 yes. And it lets us know what, that you'll, you, you'll meet someone every now and then. Every now and then. That have the what? The same mind. The same attitude. The same conviction. And that is what? You believe in what? Jesus Christ is what? One Lord, yeah. one faith, one baptism yeah. of a living God. Yeah. We, don't, we, don't, we don't stray away. Yeah. Got our mind <laughs> focusing on what? Yeah. Yeah. Help. Yeah. Focusing on heaven so that one day that we can receive our just reward. Yes, yes, yes. And that just reward is what? Everlasting life. To be with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Thank you, Lord. Because why? He said, I'm going away. Thank you, Lord. And prepare a place for you. Yes, please. Where I am, there you may be also. But we cannot get there if we keep on continuing to Betray Jesus Christ. There's no way that we'll get there. So you are the blood. Yes, Lord. Yet running warm in our veins. Yes. We need to make up our mind that from this day forth. Yes. I'm not going to be like Judas to betray Jesus Christ with a kiss. We don't have to betray Christ with a kiss. We can betray Christ with our actions. Amen. Right. Amen. We 
cannot physically kiss Jesus Christ right now. But we can we can still betray him. And, and we see that Samson was betrayed by who? Oh, Sister Delilah. The one who he what said he could heal him. It wasn't a stranger. It wasn't a stranger. See, that's what I say. It, when someone betrays us, it's someone that we know and, and are close to. Amen. Because why? We don't have to worry about our enemies. We don't have to worry about our enemies. Because why? They're going they to they go try to stay just as far away from you as you want to stay away from them. So, be careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Because for the sake, one day he's coming back mm -hmm. for that church. Mm -hmm. Without that spot or ring. Mm -hmm. And if you have that malice, that envy, that mm -hmm. strife all bottled up on the inside, that's going to be a day that you don't want to know about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you go before him, the Bible lets us know every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. You're going to be up there confessing what you did for Christ. And you're going to say, God, I never knew you. You did, you did these things, but you did it for the wrong reason. You did it for the wrong reason. So, let us take heed to what God has to say unto the church. God bless you.
going for. Thank you. 